Hi, and welcome to another Free Teaching Thursday. This is where I jump into this group once a week and I teach you something about God's Word. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Anne Markey and I'm the head behind the blog OneDeterminedLife.com and the moderator for this group. Before I start, I just want to thank you so much for joining and if you're here with me live, make sure that you say hi in the comments and if you're watching the replay, please answer questions, ask questions, say hi. Um, I'll be checking the comments later um, to make sure that nobody has any questions. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you three things. The first is seven reasons why I think everybody should be reading the Bible. Two is why I use the Bible to give me direction. And three, the hope that we can find in God's word. Now, I just gave you a clue to today's teaching, and that is that the Bible is also called God's word. And that title alone should give you a clue as to why the Bible is so important. Before I go into that more, I want you to take a minute and imagine something for me. Imagine that you've been given a map and on the map marks the spot where you can find the world's largest treasure. What would you do with that map? If it was up to me, I'd be spending hours, days, months, years, however long it took to find that treasure. I would spend hours poring over the map, looking for details and clues just to know where I need to go. But not only that, I wouldn't just be reading it. I'd be getting up out of my chair and going to try and find the treasure. So I'd be using time, energy, and money. Now, the Bible is like a treasure map, except it's not the same type of treasure. Money can disappear, but the things that we find in God's word last for eternity. So if we're willing to spend so much time and so much energy on earthly treasure, how much more should we be spending on eternal treasures? So today I just want to touch on seven reasons why I think reading the Bible is important. And the first is that the Bible shows God's character. I didn't have the privilege of being on earth when Jesus came and walked among us and taught about who he was and about scripture. But I have the next best thing. I have his actual words. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 and verse 14 tell us more about this. And they say, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So since I can't go back in time to spend time with the Lord on earth, I can do the next thing, which is to read his word. The Bible shows us who God is, his big plan from creation to the end of eternity. It shows us how he made promises and kept promises. It shows us his power, his faithfulness, his love, his grace, and so much more. And if you're part of the Christian Growth Hub, you'll see that one of the Bible study workbooks that I've created is called The Twelve Names of God. And it goes through different names of who he is, and each one describes a characteristic of God. But God doesn't just have 12 names. There are more names than that. And so every single page of the Bible tells us who God is. So if you want to know God more, then the best thing you can do is to spend some time reading his word. Number two, the Bible contains a life changing message. Romans six twenty three says, for the wages of sin is death. So the, this verse tells us, plain and simple, that the consequence for sin is death. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, meaning that every single person deserves to die because we're all sinners. Now, that would all be bad news, right? But I kind of tricked you because Romans 6.23, I didn't give you the whole verse. So here it is. The full verse, Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through 
Christ Jesus our Lord. So the Bible is very clear about our penalty. Our penalty is death. But it doesn't just leave it there. It tells us also a way out of that penalty. When Jesus came here on earth, he was born as a man, lived as a man, and died and took our place. So remember how I told you that we all deserve to die? Somebody has to die. And what Jesus did, he said, you know what? I'm going to take your place. I'm going to die for you so that you don't have to. And he died on the cross and on the third day he rose again. So this life-changing message is this. We deserve to die. But God has given us the opportunity to live forever. And the only requirement is that we, be we believe that Jesus is who he said he is, that he is God, and that he came and took our place on the cross and he rose again and he's still in heaven today waiting for us. Not only is that life changing, but that changes eternity because that's the difference between spending eternity away from God or spending eternity with God. And so we each have a choice to make and the choice we make will affect us for eternity. Number three, the Bible reveals the truth. Some people believe that truth is relative, but if we use the same logic from this statement, it would mean that that statement may also not be true. Now, I took a lot of psychology, so for me, that sentence makes sense, and for you, maybe it doesn't, and that's fine. But the whole point is, we know that some people say that truth looks like this, and other people say, no, truth looks like this, and some people just don't know what the truth is and feel a little bit lost. And scripture says that we can find the truth in God, in his word. First John chapter five, verse 20 says this, and we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true and his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true and eternal life. The devil would like nothing better than for us to believe the lies. And when we're walking through this world, we may be tempted to believe that there is no truth, that truth doesn't actually exist. But scripture tells us different, that we can know the truth and we can find the truth in his word. So if we want to fight the lies, the only way we can do that is to know the truth and what it says. Number four. The Bible gives us hope. If you watch the news, you'll see stories of flooding and fires and famine and war and murder and just a lot of horrible things. So much, in fact, that a few years ago, I decided to stop watching the news. It was too much. It just wasn't good for my mental health and for my emotional health. So I had to just create that boundary. It's really easy to get sucked into the stories and feel like there's no hope. But the good news is that as Christians, we do have hope. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 say this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So as I read these verses, it makes me think of the two types of hope we have. The first is the hope that there is a purpose to us being here on earth 
and that the tribulations and the hardships we go through are for a reason. It's for the for us to learn more about ourselves, learn more about the Lord, and grow in hope. But the other thing that I see is that regardless of how bad earth gets, that one day, if we are saved, we will spend eternity in heaven. And I haven't studied heaven enough to really have a full understanding of it, but I know that heaven is where the Lord is. So if I love the Lord here where I can't see him, how much more am I going to enjoy him when I'm actually in his presence? And not only that, but the word of God tells us that there isn't going to be any pain. There are going to be no tears. And all the things that trip us up and that make life hard for us here is going to be gone. And so that's a great hope that regardless how bad life can get here, we have this hope knowing that one day it will end and that we will be with God in heaven. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that that truth has carried me through a lot of really hard days. And I hope that you're encouraged in it. Number five, the Bible shows us our purpose. As a Christian, our purpose is to glorify the Lord. That means that everything we do and everything we say should reflect God and who he is. Now, not only that, but we also have the purpose to accomplish the Great Commission, which we can learn about in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And they say, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. These verses tell us that the Lord wants us to go out and to tell people about him. When my babies were small, I felt useless. Because all I was doing was keeping these babies alive, changing their diapers, and I really didn't feel like I was obeying the Lord with the Great Commission. But the Lord was so gracious and showed me that even if I never tell anybody else about him, but that I raise my children and I tell them about the Lord and I show his love towards them, that even changing diapers... I'm being the Great Commission because it says all people. That includes my kids. And so that gives me purpose. I'm here to tell others about the Lord. Number six, the Bible helps direct our path. As a mother of three, I often have no clue at, you know, what I'm doing, where I'm going, what the future holds, right? I'm in the spot right now where I don't know what the Lord wants me to do. And sometimes it can feel frustrating. But instead of focusing on those frustrations, I can focus on the Lord and what he says. And he tells us through scripture that he's the one who directs our path. So because this particular section is really personal to me right now, because I'm feeling a little bit lost, instead of just one verse, I wanted to share with you three, and they're mostly for me, so you'll have to just indulge me, but here they go. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Now, I don't know if you go to other people for counsel, um, but sometimes when you ask for other people's advice, they might give you advice that's not so great. And what I love about the Lord is he says, I'm going to counsel you. And we can know that it's going to be good counsel because one, we know that he loves us. Two, we know that he already knows where we're going. So he knows what doors to close and which to open. And he knows what steps do we need to take and in what order. So he can tell us those things. Number two, Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So right now, I don't know what the Lord wants me to do, 
doing. I've been spending the past year trying to look for a job and all the doors are closing in my face. And I can, it'd be easy to be bitter and to be angry, but I go back to scripture and say, no, I trust the Lord. I know he knows what he's doing. Um, and I don't understand why it's taking so long. Um, but I'm okay to wait because I know the Lord and I have spent my whole life getting to know him. And so I know it'll work out. I don't know the timing and I don't know the ways, but I trust him because I know him and I love him. And I've done that through reading scripture, spending time in his word, going to Bible study, all the things, right? I've built that relationship with him so that I trust him. Um, and that gives me peace, even though I have no clue where I'm going. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. One question that I hate in interviews is, where do you see yourself in five years? When I was a teenager, I made a five-year plan, and within like two weeks, it had completely changed. And so I don't know what's going to happen five years from now. I don't know what's going to happen an hour from now or even tomorrow. But the Lord does. And I can make plans, right? If it was up to me, I'd already be working. But really, I need to, I want to follow the Lord. So if that's my desire to follow the Lord, then I need to wait on him regardless of what that looks like. And the last one is this, that reading the Bible shows our devotion. My oldest daughter, she loves Hamilton. So if you haven't seen the musical, I actually really highly recommend it. It's an amazing musical, but she's obsessed with it. She has actually gone to see it live on stage. Um, she has listened to the soundtrack like a bazillion times. She knows all the words. She'll look online for Hamilton pictures and Hamilton this and theories and just all in obsessive. She eats, breathes, sleeps Hamilton. This is a really great example of how when you love something, you spend time getting to know about it, right? You spend time learning the songs, watching the thing, talking about it with friends, finding the discussions about it, right? In today's world, you could go on Facebook and find a group for anything. So if it's like that about things that we love here on earth, then really it should be kind of like that with the Lord. If we love him, there's going to be evidence of that love in the things that we do. So the things we do don't save us. If we read our Bible six times a day, we're not going to be any more saved than if we don't read it today and we just happen to read it tomorrow. And if we love the Lord and don't read our Bibles at all, we're not less saved than somebody else. Okay, our salvation is not measured on our acts, not whatsoever. So that is not what I'm saying. But I am saying that if we love something, it's going to reflect in the things we do and in the things we talk about. My daughter loves listening to the Hamilton music. So one of the things I do when I'm preparing messages or content or whatever, I'll go online and I'll listen to Christian music because I really love Christian music and it helps me be in a space of worship. If I say I love the Lord, then scripture is his words. And so it would be like learning all the lyrics to all the songs in the play. Now I'm horrible at memorizing scripture and it's not my gift whatsoever, um, but maybe for you it is. And so you can spend the time to learn maybe just a few verses, maybe even just a word. You get to know the words of God, or, you know, if you're not a memorizer, I'm not, you read his words and you read it over and over and over again. It never gets tiring. I mean, my daughter has been on this Hamilton kick for like two years. <laughs> so we all know the music too now because we listen to it all the time. So it's a lifelong passion of enjoying his word. So when I was first planning this session, I had about 12 ideas written down. Um, but I realized that that would be way too long for today's session. And it was also the reality to know that 12 probably barely even scratches the surface. But I hope through this session, you've seen that there are multiple 
reasons why reading the scripture is a good idea and something that we should all be doing on a regular basis. So if your desire is to know God more, then the number one thing you can do is spend time in his word. And so your action step today is to take a few minutes and to think about how you are going to incorporate scripture reading into your routine. So this can be a daily thing or a weekly thing or whatever, but just to think about how you're going to add scripture reading to your routine. Now, I know that for some of you, that idea is really intimidating because maybe you feel like you don't have the time or you don't know where to start or you don't even know what questions to ask when you read scriptures. And that's completely fair. And that's one of the reasons why I created the Christian Growth Hub. This is a growing online membership for Christian women who want to grow in their faith with the support and resources they need without adding to their to-do lists or feeling overwhelmed. So if you're re looking for um, Bible study workbooks or Bible reading plans or training on um, Bible study methods, all of that can be found inside the Christian Growth Hub. So please, I've added the link in the comments, but also in the details of this presentation. If you want to learn more, just click on it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everything I said have made sense to you. If you have some questions, please tag me in the comments, ask your questions. I will answer them as soon as I can. And I can't wait to see you next week when I talk about the difference between reading your Bible and studying your Bible. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you later. Bye.